Um, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be solving another, uh, the last U.S. Uh, questions, uh, the last U.S. asked questions on apply electronics. Um, so we get right into it. So starting with the first question, we have a semiconductor is formed by dash bonds. A covalent, B electrovalent, C code, uh, coordinates, and then D, none of the listed answers. So the right answer here is going to be. Okay. The right answer is going to be A, covalent. Because when you talk about semiconductor, we know that they have four valence electrons and these electrons can be shared with neighboring atoms to form covalent bond. Now, question two. A semiconductor has dash temperature coefficients. We have A, positive, B, zero, temperature coefficient, C, negative temperature coefficient and then D, none of the listed above, listed answers. The answer is going to be C, negative temperature coefficient. What that means is that if we increase the temperature of a semiconductor, the resistivity is going to reduce. Then as well, I'll refer to that as what well, negative temperature coefficient of resistance. Now, question three. The most commonly used semiconductor is, so you can see that we have A, germanium, B, silicon, C, carbon, and then D, sulfur. So the answer will be B, silicon. The strength of a semiconductor, the strength of a semiconductor crystal comes from A, force between nuclear, B, forces between protons, C, electron pair bonds, and then D, none of the listed. So the answer here is going to be C, which is electron pair bond. Electron pair is just talking about covalent bond, right? Because you have um, uh, semiconductors. So if you have the main semiconductors, they can share the electrons to form covalent bond. When a pentavalent impurity is added to a pure semiconductor, it becomes... So when you talk about pentavalent impurity, meaning we are looking at an impurity which is having uh, five valence electrons. So if I have five valence electrons, yeah, maybe we have five valence electrons. So we can see that if you add this to a semiconductor and a semiconductor is having four valence electrons, so you can see that in order to form covalent bond, or in order, you can say, in order to complete the uh, the, cell, the shell of the semiconductor, you can see that only four um, electrons are required. But here we have five. So you can see that each time you add a pentavalent impurity to a semiconductor, meaning you are going to have an excess of one electrons. Right? So if you have an SS of one electron in that case, what do we get? Meaning you have more negative, right? Meaning you have negative type impurity. So it become negative type semiconductor. You form a negative type semiconductor. N-type, so we call it N-type semi, which we refer to as N-type semiconductor. As a doping of a pure semiconductor increases, the bulk resistance of the semiconductor A remains the same, B increases, C decreases, and then D remains the same. So here, which I already explained regarding uh, the temperature, how temperature uh, increases, like when the temperature increases, uh, increases in a semiconductor, we know that the resistivity tend to decrease. And we know that when it comes to the relation between resistivity and resistance, resistance is that proportional to resistivity. So if the resistivity is reducing, meaning the resistance, which is what we refer to as the bulk resistance here, is also going to decrease. So here, when you dope a pure semiconductor, right, what that means in a way, you are increasing the what? 
the conductivity of the semiconductor. The con as the conductivity increases, meaning the resistance is reduced. And so we have here to be C. Now seven, the random motion of holes and electrons due to thermal agitation is called here we refer to this as diffusion. Right? So here when you have motion of what uh, electrons and then it's referred to as what diffusion. We forward bias a we forward bias to PN junction, the width of the depletion layer reduces, right? So we get here to be A reduces. And then we have the increases. C is remain the same and then D none of the listed. So the answer here is A decreases. In an interesting semiconductor, the number of free electrons A equals to the number of holes. B is greater than the holes. C is less than the number of holes. D, we have the num none of the listed answers. So here the answer is going to be A, right? Equals to the number of holes. Think about it. If you have an interesting semiconductor and you think about apply some energy so that electrons can move into the conduction band. So as the electrons move, mean they have to leave a hose, right? They have to leave a hole. So each time a, an electron escapes, it leaves a hole. So meaning the number of holes becomes equal to the number of uh, free electrons. Number 10, which of the following rectifiers uses four diodes? So here, when you come to four diodes, you know it's going to be what? Full wave. So you can see here we have a half wave, B full wave, C half wave, and then full wave, D none of the lesser answers. So the answer here becomes B full wave. Which of the following rectifiers? Question 11. Which of the following rectifiers uses only one diode? So you know that the rectifier that will use one diode is going to half wave rectification. So the answer here is A. Ripples are low in. We, talk, we didn't talk about ripples, but if you think about ripples, which occur uh, in, a, in the output wave. So the ripples here, yeah, you see that if we are having what? We have a half wave rectifier, B, full wave rectifier, and then C, positive rectifier, and then we have the negative cycle rectifier. So the answer is actually between A and B. And then we can see that if I have full wave, that is going to reduce more ripples. All right, ripples. The maximum reverse voltage that can be applied to a PN junction without causing them to a diode score. Okay. So you can see that when we're talking about reverse biasing, we talk about the reverse voltage breakdown right where we talk about there is a what voltage inverse voltage breakdown whereby if you exceed that voltage then you have a vlange effect taking place now this is talking about this right so here the maximum reverse voltage that can be applied to a pn junction without causing damage is going to be equal to what a input voltage now b peak voltage and then see we have peak peak inverse voltage. So it should be peak reverse voltage. All right. And then we have the output voltage. So answer here is C. How many types of extrinsic semiconductors are there? When you come to extrinsic semiconductors, you know that we have two, right? We have uh, N type uh, semiconductors. And then P type semiconductor. So the answer here becomes two. Then we have the last question, question 15. A germanium PN junction in a forward conduction has a voltage drop closer to. This is talking about the barrier potential relative to um to a semiconductor, right? You know, for example, if you have a Silicon semiconductor, the voltage, the barrier potential is usual 0 0.7. So this is talking about the barrier potential. And when it comes to germanium, it's usual 0 0.3. But looking at the possible answers, we can see that we are giving A, which is 0 
B is 0 0.7, C 2.1, and then D 1.1. To see the closest answer to 0 0.3 is going to be A. Okay, so this is the uh, end of the first part, meaning the solution for the first 15 questions. So I'll solve the remaining question in the next video. Bye-bye. See you in the other video.